like no other, whether you're looking for cultural and spiritual enlightenment. husband and wife. You may kiss the bride! in the heart of the Dubai Marina to have a chat with Karim Ali, one of the two founders of Extreme Way, the most successful company for wakeboarding and wake surfing in the UAE. I got my board, I got my vest, it's time for me to get wet and go surfing. We have here in the beautiful Toscana, all together assembled um diesen einmaligen Moment mit euch beiden beizuwohnen. Der Tag, an dem ihr euch das Versprechen für ein gemeinsames Leben als Ehepaar gebt. Ihr seid jetzt Mann und Frau. Und denkt immer dran, was Flo verheiratet hat, das darf niemand mehr tun. Lieber Andi, du darfst deine Braut jetzt offiziell küssen. Until next time, I'm Florina Kimbi. Sayonara, and goodbye. Hi, I'm Flo Akimbi, and I coach and train professionals to become outstanding communicators and public speakers. Public speaking is one of the most valuable skills we as human beings can possess. If you know how to craft your content right, if you know how to convey your message, and if you know how to deliver it right, you'll be always one step ahead of the game. My speaking journey started from an early age on, as I was fortunate to have many opportunities to stand in front of an audience. During my school career, I had the chance to train my voice as a member of the choir. Later, through working in the events industry, I was fortunate to stand again in front of an audience, this time as an MC. Over the years, I fine-tuned my skills through many speeches, evaluations and competitions. Today, I am proud to work as an international speaker, MC and coach. Let's amplify your voice to turn messages into meaningful moments.
Hello, 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 hello. And welcome back, everybody. How are you guys doing? Who's in the house? Who's in the house? We've got Fuzz, we've got Pauline, we've got Avza, and so, and we've got Sarkuna Matata uh, watching all the way from LinkedIn. So, hey, everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. Wow, I've got people rushing to cook for parents for this. Wow. <laughs> this is so you know awesome. What? You, you, you know what gets me excited every time when I do this? It's like before we start, what? there's already people already waiting for us. Yeah, I know. It's like, nah, thank it's you, guys. Cool. I'm like thank so honored. <laughs> right okay so welcome back to the just langa show and we're on our how many episode i mean this is a test come on you can do this this is the 39th episode season no two, 39 was last week it's 40th um i mean i no, think it's 40th really it's 39 yes no, last week okay well we'll check are you sure popcorn. let me check again popcorn ai can you double check and let us know whether it's episode 39 or 40th okay now welcome everybody if you're watching from linkedin facebook youtube welcome 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 all hi bugs bug soul angela so nice to meet you hi fuzz uh, i don't know if you're watching us for the first time but thank you uh welcome 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 we're so excited to yeah. have you here you are right is this the 40th episode wow jane why welcome this is for you okay so if this is your first time tuning in um watching just langa a very warm welcome to you just sit back relax and enjoy the show or if you are itchy like our popcorn community feel free to come say hello comment away because we would love to hear from you because you know when it comes to popcorn and just langar it is a party online so you'll fit right in okay so today's episode i mean is very exciting for me because within the span of one year life has completely changed for all for all of us you know our work environment has changed working mm -hmm. from home uh, connecting with your teams and clients via video conference, social media, other tools. This has become a reality. Yep. How are you guys dealing with this? Are you guys, some people are calling it a Zoom burnout. Some people are like, oh, I can't handle this. You know, um, I need to go back to normal. What is it? You know I mean? what's this year, uh, in the last one year plus was, was this. In 2019, uh -huh. When I every time when I ask a client to go for a Zoom meeting, there's some form of resistance, and the normal excuse that they will always come up with is, "Hey, you know what? We we will rather meet you face to face, right?" <laughs> That's like I've been trying to get people on Zoom for the last five years, okay? Until yeah. the whole COVID. I mean, like of his time. I, I'm, I'm like, so, yes. I, I am one of those people who find Zoom even more tired. So today's episode is not just for you guys, it's for me too. Mm -hmm. and, and I know you guys say that I talk a lot, I'm just acing it. But honestly, it's for me, I I actually hate being online. It took me a long time to like it. And 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 of course, it's also for Amin because Amin is Caillou and constipated when it comes to doing video. <laughs> so Caillou, Caillou uh, if you're listening, means um, what? Wooden uh, on camera, okay? So yeah, so if, um, but what about it's, you guys? It's a habit, yeah. though. I think it, 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 has, it, it has become a habit in the beginning, but yeah. I'm getting better and better at it. But it's like every time when the switch, camera is got switched on, right? It's like, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. And, happen, and I'm right? at the stage where my eyes are like, oh my God, I need rest. Jane is saying the same thing. After months of Zooming, this is Jane Rye, by the way. After months of Zooming, uh, Zooming events, my eyes are getting tired. And then, oh, James Fong is here. James, welcome. Hey, James. <laughs> His voice He's and Amazon is saying, uh, and must come office for me, not so much difference in 2019. <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, Nina SBM at Mads A1. Oh, not just SBM at Mads A1, I even got like 101 for further Mads in A levels. Nobody has gotten 101 before because <laughs> I over answered questions. Okay, let's just say that. Okay, so now the world has become a virtual interaction with COVID-19 pandemic and the lockdowns will eventually disappear, but one thing will remain the same, uh, which will remain well into the future, and that is virtual communication. So how is your virtual communication skills? Let us know in the comment section. Uh, how is your virtual communication skills? Does it suck? Is it freaking awesome? Or are you like, okay, okay, I want to in increase it. So that's what today is about. We're going to get you from virtual communication zero to hero how does that sound like i'm excited <laughs> i mean after um, this yep, we will not be yeah. constipated 
and kayu anymore, okay? Or wooden, okay? That would take some time to improve. It's the <laughs> we will find out, quiet. okay? Yeah, we so will. So we're more things for that. All right, so I'm excited. What are you guys excited about? Let us know in the comment section what do you want to get the most out of today. Popcorn AI is also asking, how is Popcorn AI's virtual communication skills awesome? So just to, you Popcorn know. Popcorn AI is scary. <laughs> <laughs> okay. For those I, think, of you, I think the communication skill that Popcorn AI needs to have is compassion. Compassion and empathy. Popcorn AI is okay. So guys, again, if you're AI has no heart. First time, uh, we actually paid a really cheap chat bot, so which gave birth to Popcorn AI. So it has a mind of its own. So we highly recommend getting paying good money for your AI, uh, chat bot. Okay, uh, just so you know. So yes, uh, empathy and and compassion is is what I think Popcorn AI needs to pick up. Oh no, we already got like a whole lecture there. I'm, I'm not going to look at it. I'm too scared. Okay, See, anyway. Uh, immediately, we, we, we are, we're talking about compassion. Like immediately, she go and lecture our audience already. But I think Popcorn AI is right. Uh, for those of you who are tuning in, uh, especially if you're in Facebook, uh, please, uh -huh. please, please allow StreamYard to uh, to access you. Grant permission okay, to StreamYard. How, how, how do you so do that? I mean. uh, You just need to go to StreamYard.com slash Facebook. Right, uh, and mm -hmm. follow the instruction from there. Just allow them to, okay. uh, which is grant at the top to you. Yeah. of the, which is at the top of the video. Okay, yeah. So that means you can see the video kind of small in it. So yeah, let us know what you want to learn from this session. Uh, Jane is saying she wants the zero to hero journey. She loves it. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, if you're tuning in, Jane actually does. Uh, she does virtual tours, so this will definitely help Jane. Okay, so now, uh, before we introduce you to the speaker, let's find out what's happening in the popcorn verse, which is the popcorn universe, because we've got quite a few things happening, right? So if you're yep. tuning in for the first time to popcorn, we're in the business of building Southeast Asia's business influences. So if there's something that excites you or you want to position yourself in, you can either join our community by joining our classes or we've got a lot of free resources on our social media. Um, you know, we're doing so many things. You're bound to find something that you like. Uh, so you can follow us on all our social media. Uh, we're mostly active on fa this Facebook group, YouTube, as well as LinkedIn, especially. You'll find lots of resources. And the yep. big news we want to share today is uh, we're going to be launching a brand new Facebook group. Where no, we're going to be launching. We already launched it oh, two sorry. days ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And it's going to get crazy because we're going to be teaching uh, you exactly what we're, what's working for us and our students and how to build your authority and a profitable business on LinkedIn, okay? So that's what's happening. We're excited because we've got huge plans and we are planning on providing a ton of value this year. So if you want to learn how to position yourself to be a business influencer, come on over to that group, okay? So yeah, so if you want to pop online, join the group because we will pop you, okay? Yeah, okay. So I'm excited about that. We're going to pour our heart and popcorn heart and soul into the group. So can't wait to see you there. Uh, also, yep. just to give you um, a little sneak peek, I'm not supposed to say this, but we're going to go live every Monday in that group where we're going to be sharing loads of learnings and values. So you want to join us there. Okay, so block your Monday night. That would be 8.30, okay? Let, let me let me give a distinction between that group and this group, right? Uh, okay. While this group, in this group, we're going to be talking in general all the social media, techs, um, anything has to do with being a business influencer. But that one particular group will be focusing mainly on how to build authority on LinkedIn. So anything that yep. we talk about LinkedIn will be specifically on that group. Right, we're gonna go live. That, we're focusing yeah. on building a community, a business community yeah. that group, and we're not letting everybody in it. We've already rejected quite a few, so we're we're gonna see if it's a good fit, even though it's free. Uh, okay, kind of thing. So yes, go yeah. over to that group. Well, the first things first is you gotta be a real human and not a bot to join the group. And I think Popcorn AI is not there, right? Just checking. <laughs> <laughs> just checking, just checking. I'm sorry, Popcorn AI, I'll be nice to you. Okay, so apart from that, we've got, um, yeah, uh, so next week on the 4th of Feb, uh, let's do this quickly. We, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people have been asking about intellectual property. What is it? What's the difference between copyright and trademark? I have no idea. So why not sort it out? We're going to get an expert who is the ASEAN IP expert to talk about this, IP fundamentals for startups, what startups need to know. And, and she's really, really good. We're going to be talking about a lot of things. So join us then, same time, uh, 8 o'clock, Thursday next week and then on Saturday 6th of Feb if you're serious about positioning yourself 
Um, no, uh, can we have the class one first? Because it's six of that. Yep. We are having yeah, our yeah. last killer all-star LinkedIn profile. Now, guys. Last class, guys. Last class. <laughs> last class, because after this, we're going to focus everything on the boot camp, which is going to be like 14 weeks course. Um, and this class, to tell you the truth, we've actually had students close sales, getting recognition. And when we talk about closing sales, we're talking one million. So even we're like, oh. <laughs> okay, so you want to go for that one? It's only 99 ringgit. We see results, okay, for this. People get invited for shows because of the way we work with our students. So you want to get in on that. I think nobody else yep. does it the way we do, right? Kind of thing. Okay, so that's that. It's like a worthwhile four-hour session that you want to spend. Okay. Yeah, and it, it depends so which gonna, teacher you get. If you get me, you're going to, you know, if you get it, Amin. Yeah, actually, for this last session, it's going to be both of us. Yes, so you'll get the, the best of both. So you're going to get, get yeah. the best of both. Maybe you'll even get Popcorn AI. No, you will get Pauline. So uh, with Pauline, you better good luck. <laughs> She's like, whoosh. Okay, so anyway, um, after that, on 18th Feb, we've got Dean Wei, who's going to be talking about um, creating the evergreen content for every stage of your funnel, because you know how difficult it is to get the copywriting right, you know, especially uh, how do you create that value in it at each stage of your funnel, you can write something. So this is definitely something that we want to tune in uh, to, that's 18th of Feb. And lastly, on 25th of Feb, we're going to get, um, we don't have the poster yet because it's just been confirmed, but I mean, I finally got you a TikTok marketing expert. She's not just TikTok marketing expert, she's also WeChat. So if you want to grow big in China, that is the episode for you, okay? So that so will be 25th Feb. WeChat and TikTok, man. I like Ooh, that. But I think we're, uh, I'm going to focus on WeChat, no, on TikTok. Uh, if we want to focus on WeChat, maybe there'll be another episode, okay? Kind of thing. Okay, so that's what's happening in February. But tonight, let's learn some hacks, tools, and strategies, and stories that will change the way you communicate forever. Are you guys ready? Then let's just lung out with it. Intro video, I'm in. Oh, Salah, it's going to be Every episode, this happens. Okay. There's, there's always one of those things. Okay, but let's go into video. <laughs> All right. Hello, so, hello, hello. Oh, oh, hang on. I just want to say this. Amsad also agrees with me. I was invited for several interviews after that class. Woo -hoo! All right. You want to do that? Come on in. Lucky, uh, Lucky Lysander, welcome. I, I think you guys came from last week's episode. So nice of you to come in. Oh, Popcorn AI is reaching about uh, staying on my boss's side. Yeah, at least you know who's the boss. You know what I mean? And she's saying AI is perfect. All right. So without further ado, let's get started. I am Nina. And I'm Amin. Welcome to the 40th episode. Uh, not 40th episode. It's actually the 40th uh, live session that we have. Season 2, episode 3. And guys, happy Taipu Samdi. <laughs> okay. I forgot to wear my photo, but you know, I'm very, very happy that all of you are here. Yeah. Okay. Right. So anyway. we are celebrating our first social distancing Taipu Samdi. Yes. All right? you know, but, but I think um, the spirit is still there. <laughs> Definitely the spirit. I was going to cover about a post, but, you know, I didn't have time because, you know, flow is more important in today's episode, so I had to cover that. Okay, anyway, welcome back. Happy Taipusam, everybody. Today, um, just what is Just Langar about? We cover the latest on content creation, social media, entrepreneurship, and tech to help you guys position yourselves as business leaders and industry authorities through content creation. Now, in other words, we are building Southeast Asia's business influences by building your authority, impact, and income on social media. So if there's something that excites you, join our uh, Facebook group. Yeah, okay, easy. Let's make it easy. Okay, now we're <laughs> going to be talking about delivering winning communication, which when you know and apply some basic and simple strategies, you can turn an ordinary communication into an extraordinary experience. I mean, are you excited about that? Because you'll be complaining I'm very Caillou, right? Yes, so... okay, guys. <laughs> So before I intro you to the speaker, if you're joining us for the first time, our episodes are very chillax and organic. If you have any comments, just type away in the comment section and we'll get them answered for you. So who do we have in the house? Tonight, our guest is someone who's li who lives his life not, um, I mean, I would say on stage. It, it, I mean, he was probably 
um, his mom probably gave birth to him on stage because that's how long he spent on stage, okay, kind of thing. Um, and not just on stage, but in webinars, conferences, where he's either hosting events or he's in a panel discussion, fireside chats, interview interviewing industry experts, giving keynotes, or behind the scenes helping leaders and teams take their communication skills to the next level. Now, an absolute believer of public speaking is a skill which every human can embrace. Please join me in welcoming communication coach, event moderator, and content curator, Flo Akin B. Welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. Here. Welcome, welcome. welcome you gotta do that, to right? Thank How you very you? much and happy 40th live show. Big achievement. Thank you. All right. Well. Okay, cool. Wait, hang on a minute because I lost my notes. Okay, so Flo, first things first, let's start with we love your hair. I mean, especially I mean love your hair because <laughs> I mean has lack of it, right? Kind of thing. So, you know, you're this beautiful exotic mix. Oh, hang on. yes. You invited me because of my hair. <laughs> that was one. That was one. <laughs> you know, when I sent out a message uh, with your photo, everybody was like, oh my God, look at that hair. And I'm like, yeah, why do you think he got on the show? Or, you know, kind of thing. So they're like, yay, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. So I do have a question about that hair, but that's later. But so first things first, you're this exotic mix of German Nigerian. And then from MC, you now coach people on public speaking, also personal growth development coach. Um, and you're German Nigerian, but you now live in Dubai. So, uh, uh, how on earth did this happen? Could you could you share with us how you started? Yeah, um, you know, doing what you do, you know, and how you ended up in Dubai, and what's that been like for you? Yeah, and how do you work with your clients these days? That's a lot of questions. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of questions. Let's let's start with the first one. What's my what's my journey and my story? So let me yeah. fill you in. As, as you said it rightly, I'm German Nigerian. My dad is from Nigeria, my mom is from Germany. And while well, I grew up in this wonderful Bavarian town, small 16, 18,000 people, I was the only one with a beautiful Afro. Not even my brother has an Afro like this. Uh -huh. And wow. it's been fantastic, right? It's, it's, a bit, it's a country of beer, leather holes and sausages, traditions. And I participated in all of that until I was 30. And I was lucky because Already in school, I was always in a choir. And that already was my first kind of connection to communication, being on a stage and also working with the voice. And then after school, I worked, uh, instead of going to the army, never went to the army, but what I did is I worked in a psychiatric hospital. I had to do my social service for a year. And that was actually one of the first moments in my life where I understood the power of communication. Quick story, my very first day in the psychiatric hospital, they leave me on a station with 40 people by myself. I'm 21 years, no introduction, no nothing. So I'm just reading through the files, literally being shocked at what, all these stories, and shocking stories. And then it knocks on the door. So I open the door and, and this tall guy is standing in front of me, wild hair, glasses dirty, no no shoes. And then he's, he's like, oh, uh, I'm not feeling well. Can I come in? I'm like, sure thing doctor come in let's have a chat and and then he goes like oh, i just can't take it anymore and he goes like i can't take it anymore i'm like what what can you take anymore and he's like make, makes this move as if he wants to stand up he's like i have to kill you now and i'm like you sit down right now <laughs> which uh -huh. worked i survived and he was playing a little bit with me but i already that moment literally i understood already a little bit of the authority and the power of communication and what you can do with your voice and then fast forward, I worked in events for many, many years until 2009 in Germany, had my one man event agency and I studied event management and communication management until I came to that point where I was done and I decided to either I now set myself up as a larger agency or I go and see the world. And that's what I did. So I went to Dubai, started with a German agency here, changed to another agency, George P. Johnson worked on the IBM account until 2015. That, that was actually from the client experiences and the projects I did and everything amazing. There was only one issue. I hated being employed, hated it right. to the point where one day I was crying in the office. And wow. what do you need to know about me? I'm not a crier. 
I don't like to cry, but for me, I really wanted to be self-employed. By the age of 35, that was one of my main goals, and I already had a coach for three years who also then brought me to Toastmasters and encouraged me to try out different business ideas, but I just had no idea. So by 2015, we got married, and I decided I'm going to quit my job. I'm going to work as a freelance event director, but then also what I did is I diversified. So I started working again as an event moderator. I then started to do communication coaching, which started off very, very small, just doing a little bit public speaking sessions with the knowledge that I had from Toastmasters, which just grew over the years and years. I did a coaching certification then over the next couple of years, as well as then some wedding ceremonies, as you can see, something not so much for the money, but for the heart. And then COVID-19 came. And okay, COVID-19 wow. just... Uh -huh. Yeah, big game changer, because okay. everything until that time I did face to face. Mm -hmm. And I had to very quickly then just let go of everything because my, my contracts, all my pipeline, everything fell apart in two weeks and what I had left. And when I looked back at how can I still make an impact and add value and earn some money was communication coaching. So that's why now I'm really laser focused on communication coaching and helping and empowering people to make an impact through communication. That's, That's what fantastic. I did. And, and, and this became clear, what, in March? Um, how early did you pivot? I guess you had no well, choice yes. for two weeks, right? Yeah, exactly. So in two weeks, all of my contracts went away, whether that was an event that I was organizing, whether that was face-to-face -face public speaking trainings, and everything fell away. So I quickly had to adapt to the virtual world. And the good thing was that I was already doing a lot of stuff online. I, I knew that what it means to do online trainings. I had all the skills as well from event management. So now I could just bring it all together and take my communication training, which I was doing already beforehand to the next level. Wow. That's amazing. Um, that's, um, Afzan is actually saying that's really inspiring. By the way, just to say some of the comments here, a lot of people are loving your hair. Some are saying that you're like a young <laughs> Lionel Richie. I mean, in Malaysia, we don't have these things, uh, a hair like that. Right. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. very rare to see it. Very yeah, rare. Very rare. To very see rare, it. rare. Can yeah. you ask them how young that Lana Richie is? Just, just for my okay, own ego, so just Jane, boost my confidence. Jane, I know you're the one who said that he looks like a young Lionel Richie. Like how young Lionel Richie are we talking about? I was going to Rhino Richie. Very hard to pronounce, <laughs> you know. And and James, I love that you're saying uh, what he. Uh, you have Aflo hair, not. Uh, Afro hair is Aflo. Yes. Aflo hair. Yeah. yeah, that's a good so one. clever. Yep, definitely. Uh, Jane is saying 25. Jane, please, you just want tips, don't you? Oh, please. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> so today, apart from emceeing, uh, how? What else do you offer your clients? I mean, uh, so apart from coaching. So it's now laser focused. What's coaching on communication skills? Anything else? Yes, correct. So the laser focus and, and the main objective and also the main communication that I go out on social media is always communication coaching. Then, of course, I still work as a virtual uh, presenter and also as a as event moderator. But that's also right now with COVID-19, a service that you can, or it doesn't even make sense to market it or to, to put energy in there. There's some clients that you have and there's other people that know already in your network what you do, but that's really how I keep it. And of course, I also work as a content curator. So because of my background in event, in, in events, so for example, last year I did for the BMW Welt in Munich, uh, talks, uh, two talks around the future of communication, the future of work. So I got all the speakers, I curated the content and created two exciting virtual events. So that's another okay. thing that I do. So th that's yeah. what you mean by content curator. Love it. Okay. Um, so somebody is saying, Tati is saying, the younger the Lionel, the bigger the hair. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh my god! Yeah, and and Jane is saying I don't I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. <laughs> I am married. I guess this is recorded. Yes. So please. Yes. Yeah, so this. Let's just make sure. Judge as well. Wow, <laughs> Jane, you're just going on edit, right? Okay. Cool. Right. Okay. Um. So now that uh, we know what you do, I have a question. How important is virtual communication today? Uh, are people aware of it or people still not aware of it? And what are the, some benefits of having kick-ass communication skills? <laughs> I know, you wow. know. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big question. Well, number one, I truly believe that even after nine months, many people have not embraced yet the power of virtual communication. And also, they I feel like they never put an effort into it. And it starts really with the basics, your camera, your light, your audio, 
a lot of people just don't care, don't know, and that's how they deliver their meetings, their presentations, their pitches, and they wonder sometimes why the effect and the impact that they're having is not that great. Mm -hmm. And it's, I don't think it's that difficult. And what I think many people have not embraced and understood yet is that there's there's a lot of things that will come back after the, after COVID-19 has, has, has passed. For sure, there will be travel coming back. Business travel, for sure, will not come back as normal. And virtual communication is here to stay. That's, that's a given. I did, for example, a, a little survey on LinkedIn, 150 people from my fairly senior network. They, they, I asked them, what do you see meetings to be to look like in the near future? Will it be virtual or face-to-face? -face? And 62% said virtual. And if you think about it, for me, if I have to do a meeting right now, drive for one hour through the city to meet somebody for one hour, then drive for one hour back, that's three hours. If I can do it in one hour Zoom call, done. And I can spend two hours for work for my own leisure time or whatever. So that's that's a given. And that's also why I think it's so important that people, well, just step up their game, their virtual communication game. Okay. Uh, so that's like, so so you think that 60% of people get it. What happened to the other 40? Because 40% is still big, right? What, what do you think that they're not getting? about virtual communication is it because they're in denial or, or what sorry just just wondering out of curiosity oh, there's a sense of hope <laughs> yeah, because i mean actually thinks they hope that things will go back to normal but it's not is it yeah i i, I let uh flu answer it first because I, i'm going to relate back to our own experience on this okay, okay so sure. what do you think about this film i i fully agree i mean and I, i'd love to hear your experience but i really think that people still still hope and i think it's also a little bit of human nature to to immediately go back to normal and i had i've seen it with many friends that 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 said oh we want to live now more sustainable or we don't want to do uh, luxury experiences or we don't want to buy luxury goods as soon as things open up people many many people not everybody but many people just go to whatever they're used to doing and i think that's the same with communication so there's a hope out there that we can just go back to normal but it's not going to happen or what do you think i mean yeah, I think it's a habit that's already been ingrained. And, uh, okay, this actually happened to us because uh, what happened was that we so had a lockdown. Us? Are you talking about you uh, and me? It's actually, it's actually, it's actually, it's actually one, of, one of our clients that we work during the first lockdown, the first wave. And then we were supposed to, uh, we, we were doing a video project with them. Remember that? It's a government, one of the government agencies. I'm not going to talk which one. Okay, here's what happened. Um, oh, we God, had, that's so bad. Yeah, you forgot your client. So we had we had a meeting done via Zoom, but then immediately after the whole lockdown was taken out, the first thing that they actually did was to call us out and said, "Hey, we want to meet you face to face, and you have to drive all the way to Putrajaya." Remember that one? Oh, that that client, yes. <laughs> yeah, and I was like complaining, "Why? <laughs> this meet face to this have a Zoom meeting, right?" Mm. So, for some people, they already have that, and it's very difficult for them to change. Popcorn yeah. AI also just yeah. remember that meeting and going, ooh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I was completely Who's the yeah, real bot? Who's the real bot now? I think it's Amin. <laughs> I love I love your bot. Love yes, your bot. Right. Our bot has an attitude. Oh, look, look what the bot is saying. Yeah. AI this remember. Is, <laughs> AI remember. This one I thing remember. I have to say though. Yes. I, I had lately a chat with, with somebody who works in investment and finance. And he said, especially in the Arabic culture, that kind of business, it's a lot done while having dinners, while having a shisha. That's when you talk with an investor and you would talk with the investor for one or two hours about anything and everything. Eventually, you, go to, you get to that point where he goes like, here's your $2 million or whatever it is. And... Yeah. Now, that's something that is very difficult to replicate through virtual communication, if you think about it, because we're not going to sit together and have a meal over Zoom. That's that's just not going to happen. So I think for a few industries, it will be still challenging to, to get back to that state or to do business in a way that they've used to. Right. So, yeah, so interesting. you're right, because that's one of the difficult things to kind of do or duplicate or replicate in virtual communication but there are other things that are beneficial right okay so let's just get straight into it then when when it comes to developing future-proof communication skills first of all what is future-proof communication skills what do you mean by that hmm. well i thought so that, about 
on the same level of understanding. Yeah. Yeah. That's Absolutely. All. I thought about beginning of this year, what, what are the next yeah. topics that I want to talk about? And when I, when I look at, okay, now also looking at the survey that I asked, how are you going to do your next meetings? Well, 60% will continue or want to continue to do them virtual, but then another 40% want to do them face to face, which means we also need to be thinking about what's going to happen after COVID. There will be definitely, again, events happening. People will go back to public speaking. Events will happen. So also on the, also that, and I, I heard that from a few clients that some are already getting anxious about the next public speaking engagement. So now is also time to prepare for these kind of situations that will happen in the near future as well. So you're going to do a lot more virtual communication that we've now learned and embraced. And then at the same time, face-to-face -face public speaking and other engagements will be there as well. So now you need to have a wider mix than in 2019. 2019 was a lot more straightforward. Now, almost everybody has to have more communication skills. Okay, fantastic. So when we talk about future proofing our communication skills, we're talking public speaking, we're talking stage speaking, person to person speaking, um, but that's not enough. We're talking virtual speaking, whether you're presenting or you're on a Zoom meeting or, or if you're delivering something, how do you engage your audience? So all that, yeah? And even more, if you think about it, Clubhouse, the, la the latest oh, yes. app that just showed up, right? Now? Yeah. And, and it's an it's an yeah. sorry I, because I do not have have an iPhone so I'm upset. <laughs> oh, I just wanted to invite you. Well, here's the Aww. thing: it's now virtual communication, but only voice based. And if you think about it, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, everywhere now you can also send voice messages. So that's another yeah. level of virtual communication. And when you think about corporate presentations and how people have mastered their voice. So many people speak with this monotone, flat voice, and it's just without impact. And you just got to yeah, <laughs> two minutes into that. I'm like, can I please shoot myself? <laughs> yeah, it's like I literally when I hear I will like, uh, kill me already. You know what I mean? Yeah. OK, got it. Yeah. So I, I forgot about that because we're getting um, if you guys are watching, we're getting video messages on LinkedIn as well. You know, like, hey, how you doing? So it's that uh, we are like when <laughs> we get it from people like that. Right. Uh, kind of thing. Um, Hannes, welcome. Hannes is also saying that I think we'll need more skills to run good hybrid events and meetings, integrating and engaging your real and virtual audiences simultaneously. Absolutely true. Faz and uh, yeah, and 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 Prathpal, who's here, loves um, Clubhouse. So make sure you follow Flo. Yeah, what, what's your name on Clubhouse, by the way? Flo Akinbi. Just okay, team name. name. Yeah. Okay, got it. Right. Okay, so when we talk about being a good speaker, um, what makes a good speaker? Because a lot of Malaysians, especially, they are afraid that their English, or how we say it, their England sucks. Okay, um, does having um, a good command of a language a requirement to being a good speaker? What are your thoughts? Well. Let's, let's just point out the obvious here. I'm not a native speaker. I'm German. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's that's a fact. I personally don't think that you have to be a perfect English speaker. You have to have perfect command over the English language to be a good communicator. Not at all. If you think about it very in very simple terms, right? I can, I can give you a five-minute speech about how you put, for example, a lid onto a bottle. Or I can just say, put this here three, four simple words, and that can be a lot more effective to a lot more people around the world than anything Perfect. else. And also, if you look at the numbers, most English speaker, most English speakers around the world, about, about 2 billion people speak English, most of them are not native speakers, which means most of the conversations that are had in English around the world are not between native speakers. So vocabulary is definitely not just what makes a great speaker. Sometimes if somebody uses the biggest vocabulary, it can even hold you back. Now, what you need to make sure is, of course, that when you think about an accent, for example, you have to make sure that your English is clear enough that everybody can understand you. If you're mixing up words or they all sound difficult, uh, different uh, or the same, then, then you have an issue. But other than that, you don't necessarily have to be the perfect English speaker. What I would say though is there's a few language hacks that you can use and apply to make sure that your communication becomes a little bit more impactful or a lot more impactful. 
Okay. Okay. Got it. So that's fantastic. So moral of the story: Please do not use uh, being, uh, you know, having a good command of a language to be your excuse about speaking. Okay. <laughs> got it. So especially no your excuses. Just, okay. Got it. You just <laughs> give me permission. James is also saying that it's not so much about how you speak, uh, but it's as much as about people understand what's spoken. Often makes the best conversation. It's true. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Um, I agree with right. that. And in fact, I, I, you know, um, there are some best presenters out there that, uh, in terms of language, they they are actually using their own native tongue as an advantage for them to actually communicate better. Uh, best example, would be Uncle Roger, right? You heard okay. Uncle Roger? Uh, Uncle Roger. Yes. Yeah. So um, so he uses that as an advantage, isn't it? Yes, definitely. Um, I mean, yeah. um, Uncle Rogers is a stand-up comedian um, who does videos, and he was dissing this um, British Indian how she was cooking rice, and he speaks mm -hmm. in a honky accent. He speaks very good English, but he mimics this yeah. old girl from Hong Kong, and he's making fun of her cooking rice, and and he, he gets oh, so upset, and he went yeah. viral because all the guai laws were saying it. Um, and stuff like that. Profile, hang on, because we're going to go through some questions, okay? Um, <laughs> okay, kind of thing. Okay, uh, Popcorn Fest is saying AI comms impacts the heart. They need tissue. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Okay, um, so. <laughs> um, okay, what? So, <laughs> ask Flo to pronounce silly, silly, sell, satay sticks. Okay, go, Flo. Go do it. Silly, 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 sell satay sticks. Okay, faster. Now, here's there you go. Silly, silly, sell. I love that one. Where silly, is it? Silly, yeah, let me read it. Silly, silly, sell satay sticks. Silly, silly, sell satay sticks. Silly, silly, sell satay. That's a tricky one. Satay sticks. You know okay, what? Right. One of the best ways to improve your accent and your pronunciation, by far, of course. All of these, these tongue twisters are amazing. There's so many great ones and also many actors use them to warm up. That's a fantastic exercise. That's always something I do with clients if they want to work on their accent a little bit. Great way to improve. Wow, mm. okay, got it. So these things are very important to improve all these, uh, what do you call these? These tongue twisters, I guess, right? Okay. Yeah, tongue twisters. I have a question. Is it difficult yes. to deliver a winning communication virtually? Um, because if I suck at speaking, can you actually help me uh, become like the greatest speaker in the world? How long do you need to coach me? What do I need to do? Just wondering. Mm. I don't think there's a one-off. I, I really don't think that that answer can be said like, I'm going to take 24 hours or, or one year or whatever. Because... Everybody's different. Everybody has different skills, different experiences, different different training, different backgrounds. So I, I, I wouldn't give you an answer for that, how long it takes. What I can tell you, though, is the more time, the more effort you put in, the better you can become. And it's a, it's a given that everybody who wants to become a great presenter or great speaker or great communicator can do that. Winston Churchill, for example, is one of the greatest examples in history. He was not a great communicator at all. And there's this wonderful uh, story where he, in one of his first speeches in front of the parliament, he froze. He froze for three minutes and then he delivered it very horribly and he sat down. And then afterwards, he just practiced and practiced and practiced. And he put so much effort into his speeches until he became this outstanding communicator that he then mm -hmm. in the end was. Okay, got it. So basically, if you want to be a fantastic orator or communicator, um, it's about practice. And, uh, and here's the thing. A lot of people are so afraid they make mistakes. They, it doesn't come out of the mouth. But with language, you got to say it and make mistakes. And then only you can become better, right? So you got to do it. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And we can, we can talk about authenticity, which is connected to this topic, right after the commercial break, because I'm having a bit of a COVID day here. The little okay, one just woke up. I'm alone at home. There's no babysitter, so I have plans guys, to think we, so. Yeah. Okay, got it. We'll handle it. We, in the we actually have, we, there's a possibility for us to have the youngest uh, guest that we ever had. Yeah. <laughs> I, shall, I shall have him say hello quickly. All right. No problem. Yeah. Okay. 
So guys, yeah. so this is what's happening. Flo's wife has gone on a vacation because she was at home uh, under lockdown. Um, I mean, not lockdown, sorry, uh, under quarantine, um, you know, because of COVID-19. And now the maid is suspected. So he doesn't have um, a helper, sorry, not maid, babysitter to help around. So he has to go for commercial break. Let's just put it that way. And we might have a Flo Jr. or a young or Lionel Richie's grandson joining us shortly. Okay. So like yeah. The youngest, the youngest. But you know what? Before uh, before Flo comes back, uh, do you know who Flo reminded me of? Who? <laughs> <laughs> you actually got it and you put it there. Oh my god! I just remember. Hey, you know what? It's Ellie Cats. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite Ellie? Oh, oh. Oh, hi. oh my god hi oh wow he's like a cherub hello hi. that will be the little one so now let me put him in front of the babysitter called coco melon only parents will know that one yes <laughs> for all of those who best, are tuning the best in okay. ever yeah, Coco Melon is like the Didi and Friends, <laughs> okay? Or oh, Baby Shark kind of thing. Yeah, kind of thing. Makase. All right. Thank you so Makase. much. Super interactive. If you guys have questions, why don't you list it down? Perthpal, I did not forget about you. We will get to it, okay? So that was a blonde Lionel Richie, you guys. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, I'm get... back. He's loving it. You might hear some baby gibberish in the background. Oh, <laughs> Apologies that's okay. for that. Okay, so what? Um, all right, so what's the biggest? What are some big? Let's go straight into it then. What are some basic and simple strategies that can turn any ordinary, you know, uh, virtual communication into an extraordinary experience? Let's get straight into this. Mm. Get your notebooks ready, people. <laughs> well, I think there's a few different approaches, and if you also if you look at people around the world, what they do. Many people have different strategies. Gary Vee, great example, super successful. He's, he's all about run and gun, right? He gets in front of his cell phone, he shoots something, and then he chops it up and he posts it on Instagram as a story. He posts it on LinkedIn. He posts it in this and there. And it's, it's not very, very refined content. It's very authentic, though. And, and he's a smart guy. So what he says also makes sense. That's a great way. If you, if you look, for example, what Arnold Schwarzenegger just did with his speech after the uh, the kind of parliament was stormed in the U.S., he, he had a very refined speech, right? He positioned himself as an ex-governor, U.S. flag behind him. He had the cone and sword in there, and he delivered again a communication that went viral. I, I loved it for the structure of the speech. I loved it really for, for the prop that he used. That sword is just legendary. It was absolutely amazing. I loved it for the stories that he put in and the structure that he used to, where he started with my story, then he turned it into our story. And then he talked about what's next. That's a world famous structure for communications and speeches that so works really well. Or for example, if you think about Prince EA, amazing right he combines his speeches and his content with a little bit of music with a little bit of rap with a little bit of poetry and creates very unique content again very authentic and very different so honestly so, uh -huh. no, no no so so what what is it so honestly what is it that makes it amazing i think i think you need to look at what are your superpowers? What are your strengths? What are you passionate about? And what is the right channel? What is the right medium? And what is also right for your audience to transport that? And if you if you if you think about that, if you look at your strengths, if you look at what you love, if you know what how you can make it different, not just create another video as everybody does it, now then you're on to something. I don't okay. think for communication in general, there's a one size fits all, right? Of course, if you want to say, I want to be just a professor sitting in front of a bookshelf talking about X, Y, Z. Yeah, then you can do that. And then you can look at, of course, I can look at the content. I can look at the delivery and I can see what kind of virtual tools maybe I use or what are the props I introduce to make it a little bit more exciting. But if you really want to step up your game, you need to really think a little bit bigger in terms of communication. Okay, yeah, I, I like this concept. Yeah, super, when you say when you say about when you're talking about superpower, uh, what does that actually mean? Uh, do, you, do you have an example of this? Uh, Yes, and, absolutely. And how do we find our superpower? You know, yeah, some people yeah. need to some have people don't know. <laughs> to to kind of see that's my superpower. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. yeah how, how, well, how, great How questions. do we discover that? Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you. So for me, anytime I would do a feedback session, the first session that I would always do with a client, somebody gets to present, get to talk, I need to understand how you communicate, and then I will give you feedback. But before I tell you anything, what you want to improve, I'll always ask the same question. What are your communication superpowers? Most of the time I get this. I, I, exactly. I, I, no, no, no. But here's the thing. We are all wonderful human beings. We all have superpowers and they can be as little as this beautiful Afro. You know, this little beautiful Afro has given me bookings. It has paid for my bills sometimes. And, you know, in the beginning when I thought about it, I was offended until I came to the point where I'm like, am I stupid? That's amazing, right? If somebody wants to give me money for me having an Afro, of course. So that's one superpower. Then, for example, also my background, me being German, Nigerian. First, when I started emceeing in, in Dubai, I, I was kind of intimidated by the, the UK professional TV presenter or radio presenter and somebody from Australia and the US. I mean, like, how can I communicate? Uh, how can I compete? I don't have to. I'm German, Nigerian. That's pretty amazing, right? Like, there's not a lot of people that can offer that. So I don't have to have the perfect English. They will book me for, for example, how people can relate to me, how people like me and for my personality. And all of these are your communication superpowers. And there's a lot more, right? For example, I'm, I'm sure, Nina, it's with you a lot, your personality. And I mean, it's your tech savviness and your, your smartness and the way how you maybe sometimes grasp difficult topics. And all of these are communication superpowers that you have to understand. And it's a very powerful exercise to sit down and list them. And if you do the hard work, and if you don't, can't find them by yourself, ask a colleague or ask a few colleagues, ask a few friends, ask a few family members, and you get a long list. Oh, wow. That's so awesome. I love it. Okay, guys, I have a question for you. What are your superpowers? Yeah. Write it down in the comment section. Or if you don't know, ask a family member and put down the comment. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, let me recap this very quickly. If I'm Hi, Munchkin. <laughs> What happened? You can put him out, you know? What happened? Yeah, it's always oh. a pleasure to have yeah, him. Yeah, what happened? Oh, yeah, the TV happened? The, the TV is behind here. I set it up so we can somehow manage the situation. Uh-huh. Well, obviously, okay. we have to manage it. No, it's okay. <laughs> well, we'll just you, you continue. Know what? We'll just continue. You, you know, if, we, if we were to relate this back to the comic books, right? Um, Superman, for example, there are certain powers that when he discovers the strength, he knows it, but there's certain things that he doesn't know. Like, if you take a look at some of the comics, right? Mm -hmm. Some of the superhero comics. Uh, some of the superheroes, they discovered some of, the, uh, some of their superpowers yeah. on their own. Oh, but there are also certain superpowers that they only discovered after they have an interaction with people. You know that? <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. No, absolutely right. Sometimes it takes a while to, to discover your superpowers. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So Marziana is saying like a really cool thing. She's saying that superpower equals USB equals personal branding. Can it also be that? That's, yeah, that's, that's definitely a part right? of it. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, when you Popcorn AI thinks your son's hair is absolutely adorable. <laughs> Popcorn AI thinks that... <sighs> sarcasm is AI. Uh, its superpower is sarcasm. Okay, got it. Oh, boy. Love it. What's your superpower, Nina? My superpower is in I your point of view. <laughs> no, I think personality. I'm just like blah, 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 it kind of thing and and fun. Yeah. definitely. I and think I know one one of mine. I think I know I one of mine. Know. What is yours? I mean, I have balls. <laughs> yeah, not just that. I have I no have conversation. Balls. Even though if we, if it's gonna screw up, I'm just gonna go for it. Actually, I mean, superpower is like when, when he's coaching people or, or when we're on a show, he comes and asks a question and everybody goes, Poof. it's like, whoa, whoa, where did that come from? And, and then he has this ability to say something and then people like, Ugh, and they cry in a good way. I mean, not in a bad way kind of thing. Because like, oh, why did I think of that? You know, kind of thing. So that is a freaking superpower um, kind of thing. Um, Abdul Rahim is- I have another um, one for yeah. him as well. Yeah, which is I mean, you're a you're a kickboxing trainer and you need to train you told me, right? No, no, I I I I learn, I'm learning it. I'm learning it. That's okay, it doesn't matter if you learn yeah. or if you train. Any martial yeah. art that you do requires discipline. So I bet for your preparation there's also a lot of discipline involved. Look yeah. at my face. Yeah. 
When you say discipline, Popcorn AI, what do you have to say about Amin and discipline? Please let me know. Because I know you have a lot of things to say, Popcorn AI. <laughs> discipline and <laughs> You're definitely getting a reaction from Select, me. It's a selective discipline, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's selective. <laughs> mafia. Okay. I, I love how Afzan is saying Amin superpowers mafia. He basically kicked somebody's butt on LinkedIn the other day for messing with one of the students. So, <laughs> died. So, oh, God. yeah, 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 we popcorn people can be do that. We're a bit gangster. Okay, popcorn AI has already answered. Popcorn oh, AI said no fail. I, I think it's quite, this is quite related. If there is a superpower, there should be a kryptonite as well. Yeah, I, I believe that your strength is also your weakness because it's a double H sword. Is that true, though? Because he thinks hmm. I'm annoying. Could that be popcorn? <laughs> she can be. <laughs> No, it's, it's actually something really good you're touching on, right? And, yeah. and I think that's that's very important for many of your your audience that, that is just embarking on their journey of creating social media content. If you think about authenticity as a superpower, it's amazing if somebody's authentic, but that's also something where people overdo it, right? Sometimes you see somebody from the camera and they just be there completely themselves and they're crazy and it's you just got to, this is too that's much. Authentic, it's really too much. Isn't that asking for attention, though? That, that's a very fine difference between authentic and... <laughs> look, at, look, Ma, I need attention, right? Sorry. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, how yeah, do you, yeah. so which goes to the next question. Um, but probably you're going to have to wait again. How do we know when we're authentic or if we're not? You know, because some people are like, I am being authentic, but they, they still have that, you know, because we don't realize what we do. So mm. what's the best way to find out if... You know, you know what? That's such a great question because my first Toastmaster speech, I think around 2012, very simple speech. You, you you have to talk about your life. I did my cue cards and I delivered it to the best of my abilities. Mm -hmm. And I thought I did such a fabulous job. And my wife, she came to the meeting, first ever speech. And then she goes like, yeah, it was a good speech, but you could have been more yourself. And I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> How can I be more myself? I didn't know. Yeah. And I think... That's also sometimes a journey that you have to go through. It's it's really about what what does it mean to be myself and 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 how do I do it in the best possible way and that I, that I feel comfortable that the audience loves it. I think that's also something that you need to explore and and there's always a little bit of trial and error. Definitely, I mean for sure, you're creating video, then you have to show it to people. You have to get feedback in, and then you can adapt, adjust until you get to that point where you go like, yeah, that's actually exactly me. Okay, got it. All right. So now let's go into Prathpal's question because he's probably getting anxious or maybe he's no longer here. Let's see. Um, where is your go-to resource center for on public speaking, professional speaking skills development? Wow. That is such a wow question for me because the world is my oyster. I get inspired by anything and everything. And I, I learn from everything and anything, each one teach one. That's that's literally what it is for me. But of course, a lot of my learning is done on YouTube. YouTube is just amazing, right? Just amazing. I was about to say that. You want to know why? Yeah. Because when I was like stalking you and looking for videos and stuff like that, I found a flow, I can be a presentation communication playlist. And I looked at it and I'm like, that's not a flow. <laughs> so I saw your playlist. So I thought that must have been uh, like a playlist for your, your students or your clients or something. Is yeah, that true? Absolutely, though? absolutely. Yeah, yeah, very true. For example, what happened beginning of 2020, I got obsessed with all these um, graduation speeches in the US, right? They are absolutely amazing. I mean, Harvard, Stanford, you've got anybody there from, from Justin Trudeau to our German Chancellor Angela Merkel to, I don't know, even Puff Daddy, anybody's there and it delivers a great speech and it's fantastic, right? There's so much you can learn and also you, where you can see what they're maybe not doing that well and and fantastic so i'd say youtube there's there's just so much great content out there wow. <laughs> all right uh but uh thing is nina's power is not giving a fuck i mean superpower is giving a fuck <laughs> <laughs> okay and popcorn ai is saying nina's kryptonite she talks too much as power she's a relationship builder there you go um and it is that is correct. <laughs> your kid is so adorable. Uh, he has made this session extraordinary. Flo is real, gay for multitasking. 
uh, which is all your superpower. Okay. You know what? I need to just brought out something that's very interesting. I, okay, which I like to, which is about being real. Uh, what's your view on this? Yeah, especially now that you're transitioning from being offline to online. Uh, how how do you bring that out? How do you bring out the authenticity and how do you be real in front of a camera? I think that would be something that's quite interesting to do this, to take, to explore. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's let's say let's say you for example. Um, let's say you you want to create content, right? And and I'll I'll just yes. assume now you you're super passionate about martial arts, right? And martial arts is actually more that you're thinking and 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 whatever. Now, what you could you could now put yourself into a suit because you say like you know what I want to be that super professional guy and 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 really refine your scripts, but it wouldn't be you. Or you could do say something. You know what? I'd actually really would love to to do something that that, that where, where martial arts is involved into creating content around LinkedIn skills, for example. And you think about a creative way where you can show your personality, where you can show your skills. It it would be daring, but but you you would feel maybe very comfortable about it. So that that could be one example. Or, of course, it's it's about challenging yourself, right? If you if you do a lot of a lot of I think Clubhouse is also a fantastic way because Clubhouse is so spontaneous. If you do a lot of talks on Clubhouse, I think you will also find out very quickly who you really are when it comes to your personality because these talks are not recorded. They are not they are not um, prepared really. So it's it's a lot of spontaneous reactions and spontaneous is where you can also sometimes grab that authenticity and and find out what it really means for yourself. Right. Okay, got it. Yeah. Okay, so um, Zade is saying that her superpower is hunger for knowledge. Is that a superpower? Uh, is that yeah, there, there, that is possible, I think. Well, what do you think, Flo? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, hunger for knowledge, which means that if you are reading a lot, if you're learning a lot, you're super smart. So you can hunger to, you can put the next to you. Hunger for knowledge, smart, and there you go. And lots of, yeah, fantastic. Fantastic. Definitely a superpower. Um, Tati is asking, Tati, how, do you, yeah. how do you handle haters? That's a good one. Well, you don't that's have a very any. good one. I do have a point of view on that. I read this quote. Unfortunately, I forgot who, from whom it is. What other people think is none of your business. And I think that's the most empowering thing that I ever heard. Like, who cares? Like they will be always a hater. Do you think? Do you think? Don't even reply to that comment. Don't give them any power. Like you hate as much, just just let it sit there. And okay. and and if if you have to respond for, for one reason, then you should never get down to that level. That's something my mom said, right? Like you never want to you never want to talk to with a hater kind of an eye to eye level. You want to come from a point where you are where you are just. I'm, I'm not getting down to let's say if they use a very really bad language i never get down to that language uh, i'll i'll stay i maintain my coolness i maintain my calm and i'm sorry you can't offend me because this is the problem that you're having and not that i am having and i think that's that's really the the best way to look at it okay yeah thank you so much for that i mean do you have a question uh, just to add to that, and I think um, rather than wasting time thinking about what other people think, I think I would rather spend my energy on producing more stuff. So if okay. they hate me so much, I'll do more. <laughs> I'll get myself out there and just make sure that I just produce more stuff uh, on me. Yeah. This is a good one. Yeah. Uh, somebody is saying that her kryptonite is hangriness. So is when you say hangriness, does that mean when you're hungry, you get angry? And then you know you become a keyboard jihadist. Everything goes, you know, like you become all hulky on social media. Yeah. Well, very easy. Have a chocolate bar and apple or whatever next to you to make sure you don't get angry. <laughs> like, like the Snicker ads, right? Okay. On exactly. Yeah. Uh, on haters, uh, Zayd is saying that someone said whatever they think about us is their problem, not ours. That's a good one. Um, okay. Awesome. I do want to say this, Tati. How many times have we told you? It's not about you, it's about them. So start creating content, okay? I'm calling you out because this is too many questions on this already. Yeah. <laughs> um, Popcorn but, but, is smart. Send them loving vibe and move on with like, wow, that's so zen, Popcorn A. I am so proud. Did you just, Very zen. Did you just read Dalai Lama or something? That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. AI, well done. I okay. Like AI. Cool. 
I, uh, yeah, um, I feel the ease, uh, Prathpal is saying, I feel the ease to speak well is proportionate to your authenticity, just like the ease of travel is inversely proportionate to the size of your luggage. Ha, <laughs> Take that. That's what it means. Take that. Popcorn <laughs> <laughs> AI is also saying, Tati, start. <laughs> okay. And, and no, Tati, no, I have a question. Uh, actually. Okay. got called out, so yeah. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop this for a while guys, because I, I actually have a very interesting question to ask. Yes. Um, uh, you've been going, you've been doing a lot of coaching in the last one year since the whole COVID situation and all that. And I think, uh, working with your client, working with your clients, working with your students, uh, what are some of the barriers when it comes to communication that you have personally coached? Um, uh, and how do you overcome that? Uh, I would like to hear your personal story on this. If there's any top three personal barriers that people have when it comes to Communicating, what would that be? Good job. Barriers. Barriers. Mm -hmm. Gr good, good question. Mm -hmm. One of the barriers that I see a lot, preparation. People are not okay. spending enough time with preparation. Many people, for example, if you think about corporate presenting, many people prepare a PowerPoint deck, but then they never think about the words they say. Some of them would maybe, maybe put a few bullet points in, but others just Create, create that deck and then that, that there's so much content on the actual slides so it becomes more of a book than actually a presentation and that's what they use to talk about it but they never really thought about it and so preparation for me is always a really really big one and people have to understand that then of course delivery delivery is is and it's, it's a wide topic right it's a wide topic you can talk about voice you can talk about body language you can talk about the, the, the language hacks that you can use this there's, there's really a lot of when you talk about delivery but delivery for example the voice is such a powerful tool of communication and many people never even try to understand it so for me the voice is always a big one and usually with every communication client i do at least one session around the voice to make them understand the power of the voice another one of course would be content and and for content i'd say structure content structure is something very very important and something that many people never even thought about and of course now there's there's many different structures that you can apply to how to present your content but something as simple as having a powerful opening and then an even more powerful and memorable closing that should be mm -hmm. something that everybody thinks of, especially when you create a content piece, right? You want to have that opening that that hooks the audience in, where you go like, okay, that's now why I'm going to watch your video, which will take 60 seconds or one hour. And then that closing, something that is so memorable, where I go like, you know what? I forgot actually most of what you just said, but what you said in the end just brought it home. And, and these are really some of the, the things that, I, that I'd say are easy to implement but unfortunately, many people never thought about it or never really worked on them. Okay, got mm. it. So those are pretty easy things to kind of immediately, in a way, to think about it. Uh, so what was the first one again? The second one I know is, um, um, the third one I know is a structure. Man, I just forgot everything. Number two is um, mm -hmm. uh, prepare, uh, preparedness. Was that number one? And number two is- That was number one. Preparation is number one. Number, one. Uh, number two has to do with voice. Yeah. Voice, yes, correct the voice. Um, Yep. And number three is the structure kind of thing. So is that everything that you need to be like a fantastic speaker or there's more stuff? No, there's a lot more. There's a, there's a lot more. <clears throat> but at the same time, the way how I work with my clients, I always do first an analysis and then we go, okay, so for you, I would train you on the voice. We need to talk about body language. We need to talk about confidence. We need to talk about and 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 and, and then I'll, I'll, I'll share with you the tools that I believe will will help you the most and mm. communication is a huge field right if you if you think about it the, every politician has a script writer and th they they spend days and days and days in writing an amazing script so therefore it's there's so many tools that you can use so therefore you need to really look at every communication and see okay what are the tools that i want to use to make sure that i get my message across in the best possible way mm -hmm. I, I I like the street. I, I like the whole uh, concept of preparation, voice, and then um, 
uh, what was the last one again? Uh, uh, the last one and is the closing, structure. right? The structure yeah. of the closing. Structure. If opening, there, body, yeah, and closing. Body and close. If there is any best practice that you can suggest to us for each of it, let's just have one for each. Uh, what would be a good practice when it comes to preparation that you personally would do? Uh, let's go with it one by one. I think that would be quite interesting to explore. Yeah. Preparation. Mm -hmm. Let me start here with a quote. Have you ever heard about Dan Pena, the trillion dollar man? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God, that guy is crazy. Crazy guy. You have, <laughs> to, guy you have to research him. Crazy what? guy. He, I, I think he's about 80 years cool. old. Yeah, man. 70 I'm scared of him. He, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's absolutely crazy. He has, he has made a fortune, millions and millions and millions with oil trade. He bought himself a castle in Scotland and now he's a mentor. He's got the QLA method, the quantum leap method and and he trains people to to be outstanding leaders and business people and uh, fantastic watch his speeches he uses very strong language he he shouts at his audience he's, he's one of its kind really one one yeah. one of its kind now i don't always agree with how he talks but here's something that i find amazing he has been as a speaker as a coach as a mentor in front of audiences for the last 30 plus years and he, I found this quote, or I think it was in a radio show or whatever. And he said, for every minute that I'm on stage, I practice 10 minutes and I'm a world-class speaker. And that's something that I find amazing, right? Somebody at this age who has delivered the same content for years and years and years, he still practices that much. And that's where I go like, all right, preparation, wow. that's, that's what I need. Now, okay. how do you prepare? Uh -huh. That's a tricky one because I, that's, that's where the German side of me might be. I like to write a script and I write, like my, I write full on script and then I cut it down into bullet points and chop it up and maybe then I use it or I don't use it. But I like to like a lot of writing. I, mm -hmm. I've worked with some clients that would record their communication first, do a voice recording, listen to it, edit it in their mind and then record it again and edit it like that. I have no idea how that works. My brain goes like, doesn't work for me, but it works for them. Uh, another person, <clears throat> he was a Toastmaster. He was competing in the World Championship of Public Speaking. He was doing it all in his mind, all in his mind. No recording, no paper, no nothing. He was writing the script in his mind. Again, for me, I'm like, <laughs> I've forgotten everything by that time. And, 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 and so on and so forth. So every person is different. When it comes to preparation, you need to find out what works for you but you need to put in the effort and, and really work on it rather than just saying, I have a communication to deliver tomorrow and then tomorrow morning, I'll do something about it. Start two weeks and see if you put in that time, if you refine it, how good it actually can be. Okay, got it. So this goes back to your superpowers and basically how, how best you do work kind of thing. Um, uh, because like for me, uh, the reason why you got the script for today really late is because I'm a last minute person <laughs> because I work super fast in the last minute, you know, I, I should have known, I should have told you that because that's how I do with exams and stuff like that um, kind of thing. So thank you. That's really, really useful. Okay. The questions are coming in. We're going to go bam, bam, bam. Okay. Are you ready, Flo? Prothpal is asking, is there a survival guide for anyone thrown under the spotlight impromptu speaking? Mm, yes. That's a good one. Yes. Yeah. What would number be one, yeah, number one, practice impromptu speaking. <laughs> Just <laughs> practice it. It's a skill. You can learn it. Toastmasters has in every meeting they do, they have their table topics. That's impromptu speaking. And it shows yeah. you so much as a skill. The first time you do it, you're asked to speak about something for one minute or two minutes. And you're like, ah, da, da, da. <laughs> you have no idea. But then, of course, if you do it more and more, you're used to it. And one of the best ways actually to do it and also to think about it is, your introduction, how often in a Zoom meeting, in a networking event or something, are you asked to introduce yourself? Do you have a few yeah. ways to introduce yourself? Then you're great. Many people don't have that. They're asked to introduce themselves and they go like, uh, uh, so practice for sure. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's fantastic. Thank you. First of all, hope you got your answer. Um, I just want to throw in something. Uh, Tati was saying that her kryptonite is preparation. Tati, you know what? I'm going to say no. Your kryptonite is not preparation. Your kryptonite is doing something. Just do a video. Okay. Now, if Who's you're that? watching first time i have a personal relationship with tati so i'm you i'm giving I, I would be uh if i give her too much love i would be giving her a huge disservice so i need to make a stand for 
start recording okay right anit is asking a very a very good question how important is visual appearance and speed of delivery is it important to assess body language virtually or is it not on the list the reason now i i also want to say that um courts in malaysia because of the pandemic they're now doing things virtually so i think this is a really important topic how important is visual appearance and speed of delivery is it important to assess body language virtually or is that not on the list now that question has almost four topics in there i'm gonna answer them but keep the keep the question up number one number one appearance style I married an Italian wife and I'm German. Germans, not that much fashion style. Italians, they have it all. <laughs> so for me, it just took five years until I understood a little bit and then eventually I, I got off. And I think fashion is such an important tool. Well, you know, for me, I after I started to work on my fashion skills, people would start conversations with me. Even in meetings, the client would start the conversation. They would do the icebreaker just talking about my fashion because that's that's how they roll. So fashion appearance, I think, is definitely important. And you don't have to buy the important brands, not at all. You need to put in the effort. Number two, speed of delivery. Well, speed of delivery, if you are referring to the, the, speed, the, 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 the spoken words, how many words you're using, it should be, it should be just well understandable and it should also be a little bit authentic. Of course, you can play around with that. And that's something fantastic, right? If you have a very important point and, or if you're super excited, naturally we talk fast. Mm -hmm. And if I tell you a secret, I would definitely slow down and also my voice would change. And that's also how you can play around with speed of delivery. And that makes your communication definitely more engaging and more interesting. Mm -hmm. Then body language virtually, love it. Always talk about it. You know what I do when I deliver, well, this is an interview situation, so I'm sitting comfortably. But if I deliver a talk, I never sit. I never sit. I Usually what I do is I, I have a chair that I turn around so I can kind of sit half on the edge, but there's nothing where I can lean. I'm, 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 I'm almost standing, but a little bit comfortable because the session might take one or two hours. And that changes it because at first my belly is not tucked in. I can breathe better. My voice sounds better. My posture is different and my energy therefore is also different so virtual body language super important and also if you think about it when it comes to virtual body language a lot of people sit like this in front of the camera which means all the body technology that we can see is just the face but if i move a little bit back i can maybe also use a few gestures and there's a lot more that you can do same goes with many people just lean on the table and talk like this all the time energy level naturally goes down yeah that's Did I answer all the questions? Yeah, I Anit, let us know if Flo answered all the questions. So very quickly, what are some tips that you can share on how to basically level up my virtual communication on Zoom, say, or, um, you know, kind of thing? Yeah, some well, very number one, seriously, virtual communication one-on-one. Camera, light, audio, background. These are the one-on-ones. Yep. And everybody should master. And if you don't know, then either Google it, speak to me, do whatever you need to do. Minimum what you have to solve. And and mm -hmm. once once all of that is properly done, then you can look into how can you make your virtual communication stand out, right? Let's say if it's a meeting, what virtual tools can we use? There's so many cool engagement tools, collaboration tools, video tools, and 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 that you can use to make sure it's not just another meeting, it's not just another presentation rarely anybody barely anybody does that so then you need to look also into the technology aspect and then also how do you put your content together so what what can you do that opening is it an icebreaker what is it then also how structured and clear can we make that body how can we engage and interact with the others i mean you guys are doing such a fantastic job how you're making sure that your audience is engaged that they're asking questions that's absolutely stunning right and then, of course, also to the closing, there's a clear objective, something we all take away and we didn't just spend an hour doing anything. And, well, last but not least, of course, the delivery, energy, passion, all of that needs to be in virtual communication as well. That's that's also what people will, will fascinate people to, to look at you rather than just going like, oh, oh my yeah. God, this is like a whole series. It's like a whole yeah. universe. Yeah, yeah. By the way, you I need to... Just, just, just to add to that. 
yeah. yeah. Just, just to add to that as well is that you know the one thing that really pissed me off when it comes to virtual communication that is uh, for me I thought it's a common sense but people don't don't have that it's just the positioning of your laptop camera when you're doing a zoom meeting it's it's as simple as that right it's just make sure that you are eye level but there are many times whenever i'm even del delivering training i i i only see like half of their face <laughs> and so on mm -hmm. right just by improving that i think a lot of things can just change for uh, in terms of and, your delivery and another big one have you realized that still most of the people never look at the camera they just look at the screen they never look at the camera yep. but it's not about yep. it's not about the screen it's about the camera so of course you need to see and you need to get the content and the notes but as much as you can you should look into the camera right a little one agrees yeah agree right. definitely he agrees. Okay. yeah all right so yeah. What's the advice for people who are shy tati listen <laughs> although she's tati. far from tati. <laughs> Tati, listen up. Life is short, and I don't want to be dramatic, but you could be dead today. You could be dead tomorrow. It doesn't matter. If you die and you haven't done your video, you'll be like, ah, oh, it's like that one thing I wanted to do. Like, life is too short to be shy. Honestly, I, I've been a relatively shy person a lot of times in my life, and I, it, it, it's, it's just a wasted opportunity. It's a wasted opportunity. Um, have you heard about John Ashraf? No. Mm. What about? Yeah, Joanna, homework for everybody. Homework okay. for everybody. The I, I, secret. I, I, last week, exactly the secret. Last week, I, I listened to two one hour talks from two people John Ashraf and Andrew Huberman. Andrew Huberman from Huberman Lab and John Ashraf. And John Ashraf, he's a researcher. He looks at how the brain works and how you achieve goals. And he, he, he was part of the secret. And there's a lot of talks around the law of attraction. Yes, great. You know, I put out what I want from the universe and it will magically come to me. Yes, partly true. But then he also has also the law of Goya. And that's exactly what it is. Get off your ass. Do it. Yes, I love that. Get off your ass. Love it. Yeah. Law of Goya. Uh, we, we also call it law of momentum. Uh, you know, um, what's that word? I think, uh, you know, when, when you start something, it immediately starts the whole ball rolling and more things yes. to come your way mm -hmm. that kind of thing but paul is saying human is the bomb and all right saying, human yeah and tati is saying yes okay Flo, i got it yeah you better get it because i've been telling you no 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 way. tati tati listen up i want to have a commitment right now commitment yeah. right now what when are when are we seeing the first video and i want to have it in my linkedin inbox when is it happening tomorrow the day after i don't care i want to have a date yeah, declare it right now, Tati. Alama. Tati, <laughs> when? Alama, lo, Goya. I mean, when? how do you alama to flow? Uh, alama then is, get... oh no. <laughs> it's happening. It's happening. I want to have a date. It's happening, Tati. Let's go. I'm continuing this conversation. Date. Yeah. Okay, Tati, declare. Okay. Kind of declare thing. now, Tati. Date. Papan AI is saying the secret by John Asharaf. Is it? I would have yes. gone Asharaf. Okay, so yeah, that's where you can go. Okay, tomorrow, Tati, can you do a win? Are you sure you're gonna deliver it tomorrow? Yeah, confirm. No, no, right no, no. it's happening tomorrow. It's happening tomorrow. It's the weekend, but I'll be looking at LinkedIn. You connect with me on LinkedIn, and then I will oh, see that video. Even giving a time, two p.m. Malaysia. Oh, two p.m. Malaysia time. Yeah, you go. Okay, so send it to Flo's inbox. Make it public so that the whole world can see. Okay, thank you. Bye. All right, I'm in. Next question. <laughs> Okay, I have a question. <laughs> how um, Wait, yeah, before that, I just want to check. Um, how much okay. time do we have with you, Flo? Oh yes. Just, just, just want to spend your time on this. Yeah. As, as long as the monster looks coco melon, we're good. <laughs> it looks okay. Like okay. 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 Got it. Um, what is the secret to moving the audience with the power of words? Mm. Oh, how do we transform ordinary speakers? These are people who are okay into extraordinary performers content for sure content okay sure what do you content. mean by content? And, uh, yeah yeah it's uh, when you want to really transform and really move the audience and have a lasting impact it's about content you need to have great content there there needs to be something that really adds value to the audience and the best way to transport that is storytelling for sure okay. content uh, yeah 
having okay. really, really rich content. And when I mean rich content, you you have to and you research properly, you you add facts, you add, and then you have these stories to make sure that you're just not giving me facts that I can't remember. You're giving me a story that that has that has these facts included, embedded in there, and then there's this clear outcome and and that's just then what uh, that's just then a language that I can remember really well, and that can also has the power to move me. Okay, so I have a question on that. I have a yeah. question on that. Well, well, mm -hmm. so, uh, I just want to I would just want to go deeper when it comes to storytelling because we've oh. been listening, we've been hearing about this with uh, almost everyone's talking about it, right? Yeah, yeah, we do storytelling, uh, right? but I would like to know your point of view in this. Uh, flu's guide to storytelling. <laughs> okay, if there is an element right? that is yeah, flow's guide to storytelling. Oh, okay, okay. so if there, there, if, if there are elements of storytelling that make the story interesting, what would be yours? So, uh, we have only limited time here, so uh, don't forget, yeah. right? There's, <laughs> there's coaches that just do storytelling. That's how how expansive this topic is. But if there's mm. if there's three quick things I I, get, I can give you, the hero journey. If you haven't heard about the hero journey, if you want to learn storytelling, that's one go to. John Campbell, an American professor of literature, he has been researching all the myths and all the stories in the world. And then what he found out is there's, there's basically the monomyth. There's always this structure that goes and it's very simple to explain, very simplified. There's basically the ordinary world and the special world. And there's in three mm -hmm. stages, separation, Initia no, initiation, separation, and return. Initiation, separation, return. So initiation, that's the call to action, right? So for uh, if I tell you then also it in my words, for me, that was COVID. COVID was a call to action because it made my business go to zero. And then I had to go from my ordinary world where I lived into the special world. So in the special world, what you have is a lot of trials and failure. So I had to test new formats. I had to try out new collaborations. I had to do things that didn't work out. But that eventually also led to the growth of new skills, which then also happens in the special world. And then there's usually this big wow moment, the growth of new skills that you then have, which is a, a point of transformation. And that point of transformation then leads into you back into now the new ordinary world, but upgraded. And that's their hero journey. Very, very simplified, amazing, powerful structure. That's something that everybody who wants to learn more about storytelling should learn. Yes, sir. Okay. Want to, so we need okay. to change the channel quickly. So John Campbell, okay. yeah. storytelling, that's one. Okay. Number got two, it. I've got, I've got, I always teach about the wow factor. Do you guys know what the wow factor is? No, let no. us know what you mean by the wow factor. Now, the wow factor is something that is very memorable. And especially when it comes to facts, right? Every company, every person, everybody has facts, whether that's for your work, for your life, there's always some stats that you use. Now I can put stats into just telling you, well, last year I worked with 150 companies. Okay. Uh, okay. And I can say, now I worked with 150 companies. If you, if you just put it that way, sounds great. If I would say now, how many people actually did I talk to in these companies? How many lives did I touch? How many, how many, I don't know, minutes did I spend training? Whatever, I take this number and transform it into something that is much larger and that actually tells a story. Now, that's something that is amazing for storytelling because you take that one fact and you shift and turn it into a big story. And there's some brands that have done amazing jobs with that, right? Mm -hmm. So that's that's one the wow factor, creating these wow moments for storytelling, where you go like, oh, I, I, it just blew my brains out. And the last one that I'd say for storytelling, it's a structure that I learned from, I did in 2019, a script writing course, because as a communication coach, when you work with corporates, you never go into script writing, right? It's, it's, or it's rare that you go into script writing. It's more about PowerPoint presentations and so on. So I wanted to just really go into the, the, the level where a politician writes has a where, where politi a speech writer for politicians sits and i worked where i did a speech writing course with simon lancaster amazing guy fantastic ted talk out there and he basically gave us this one structure which is super simple mm -hmm. my story mm -hmm. our story what's next mm -hmm. 
And if you look at Arnold Schwarzenegger's speech, he also goes into this topic. And Oprah Winfrey, when she receives the Golden, the Cecile B. Mill Award at the Golden Globes in 2017, 18, she also goes through this structure. So what this structure does is my story. I'm sharing something. I'm being open. I'm being vulnerable. I'm making sure that you know something about me that is very personal. And then we go into our story. I make sure that you understand that I'm no different than you are. We're all from the same tribe. We're all the same humans. We do the same thing in the morning and in the evening. We brush our teeth. We go to the toilet. We go, we wash our hair. That's all the same. We are one. So now we've established that you can trust me. I'm one of you. And then we can talk about the future. And that's also an amazing structure for storytelling. So three things wow. everybody can take quickly away. Thank there you. There you go. That is uh, everything. Uh, that's my first time um, hearing my story and uh, our, uh, my story, our story, and story. what's, what's next? next? Yeah, I mean, here yeah. me, I'm so comfortable because I actually read Save the Cat, so I know the whole. And 99% and of films follow that anyway. Uh, because yeah. if you do, you're going, you're going to tank at the box office. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> Every <laughs> single film out there is uh, follows the save the cat kind of thing. Yes. Um, yeah. And but yeah, thank you so much. That's so powerful. Um, and Perthal is saying everything around us is storyable. What is needed is to put your antenna up and structure it to the objective you intend to hit. Yeah, definitely, absolutely agree with you. Good job. 100%. Wow. Okay. I'm going to um, check out Save the Cat after this. <laughs> I've never get a book is, before. Um, I actually have I've it. Never, so I've, I've, it okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. But if and you, you don't have to read the book. Yeah. There's yeah. interviews huh? that he has given to right, right towards the end of his life. He's done in a series of interviews where he really talks about all these myths. Amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. amazing. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Okay. Azan is saying that was so insightful. The story, the storytelling structure. Oh, I cannot speak already. Story. Stolly, <laughs> stolly, <yeah. laughs> very sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh, Tati. Um. Oh, somebody says do a short ki uh, kiss. Keep it simple because somebody's asking how long should the length be, kind of thing. Um. Yeah. What What's a good length for a story? How long should a story be? It's all about your audience and the channel that you're communicating with, right? If you look at you videos they are much longer and the audience also watches it on youtube linkedin videos for me 60 to 90 seconds and and that's really the ma maximum that i that i put my videos on linkedin uh, uh -huh. facebook might be different i haven't been really on facebook lately i i you, you have to look at the medium you have to look at the content and get the audience that's what i say Mm, okay, cool. But Tati, for you, is to do and to do a lot, okay? And then from there, you'll get feedback. Okay, so first thing you can do. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. So okay, we, we have now another fire. question from the question. audience. The fireman. Okay. The fireman. Got it. Uh, what's the title of the book? What book is it? I think Save the Cat. It's okay. Save the Cat. Okay, save the cat. Okay, got it. Um, let's go into the rapid fire before you, we ask you the last question. Okay, looking at how the world is moving and changing, what's your best advice to businesses and startups on communication? It's, it's a repeat, but we're going to edit it out. Okay, so what's your best advice to businesses or startups on communication? Work on your pitch. Work on your pitch. I mean, your pitch is so important. Like, are you able to describe your business in an elevator or are you able to convey some your message or the, the story of your business in an elevator ride? I think that's really one of your best ones, the elevator okay. pitch. Yeah. Love it. Work on the pitch. Work on the pitch. The log line uh, is also very good uh, from Save the Cat because you're getting the essence of the whole film. You only have like 15 seconds to pitch to someone, something like that. Yep. Yeah. I think Kathy is asking a lot and wondering, no, you don't do 100. You keep doing until 100 and you keep improving. Okay, Kathy, got it. So what are your top tips for and leaders for improving their communication skills if they've just started? it? Sorry, come again. What are my top business? Uh, what are your top tips for business owners and leaders for improving their communication skill if they have just started? it? My top tips, practice, practice, practice put out content and if you if you need in the beginning first to to like if you if you one of the reasons why we don't put out content is because we want to be perfect so if you want if you are a perfectionist 
try to get rid of that. But in the meanwhile, just create content and then share it with Nina, share it with Amin, share it with me, share it with your family, with your friends, whatever. But until to, you get to that point where you are able, happy to share it with the world. But it's about creating content. So that's really for me, do it, just do it. Awesome. Okay. So what about, uh, what are your top tips for advanced speakers for improving their communication skills? Advanced speakers. Yeah. I, I always love working with advanced speakers because it's also for me a bit of a challenge to, to make sure that, yeah, I find something that adds value. And what I've seen with many, okay, sorry, give me one second here. We're not happy with the program that I've chosen. Baby shark. Yeah. No, well, I'm supposed to find the fireman. I uh, like that's too much multitasking for me. Okay, so uh, an advanced an advanced speaker, I'd say. Okay, sorry. Now um, you need to do a little commercial break. I have to find the right video. I'll be right back. Okay, got it. Okay, got it. I mean, what's your actually uh, forget? I mean, what about you guys? What are the biggest thing that you've picked up from this session? Let me know in the comment section. What has been the biggest learning for you? Prathpal is saying Comedy Central. What do you mean by Comedy Central? Zay, the book that um, uh, Flo mentioned is actually Hero's Save Journey, Hero's Journey, and Save the Cat. Save the Cat is actually a film script, you know. But um, a shorter version is for you to watch the interview. By the person who wrote it. But yeah, let us know in the yes. comments section what's your biggest learning so far. Your in, biggest insight from this whole session but yes for advanced speakers what's your top tips for helping them improve uh to a so, whole new level because you're already advanced i'd say the voice mm -hmm. because even if you're an advanced speaker usually there's always more that you can do with your voice and your voice is yeah. such a powerful tool right you can use it to for for somebody to fall in love with you you can be annoyed by your voice you can you can have authority and if you, if you go like, yeah, I'm pretty good, then, well, Morgan Freeman is called the voice of God. That's your challenge. That's your benchmark. That's a voice. And then for an advanced speaker, because you're really good, I'd say look at what you're always doing and then see, okay, what's something new that I can do? Well, how can I challenge myself? How can I get out of my comfort zone? Is it a new channel that I'm using? Is it a new tool that I'm introducing? Is it a new structure? Whatever. But I, I, I challenge myself. That's what I'd say for an advanced communicator. Okay. Awesome. Got it. And last but not least, the most important question of the day is how do you take care of that gorgeous hair of yours? <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is a secret. Oh, so and, secret. and so Soap and water, is that it? <laughs> no shampoo. There's cleansing conditioner. I've got a natural cleansing conditioner and a conditioner, but we don't use shampoo. Don't tell right. it to anybody. Right. Okay, okay, we got it. No, I understand. Uh, basically, no poo, right? Kind of thing. That's that's what they say. Okay. Yeah. Um, definitely. Okay. Thank you so much, bro. This has been super insightful. Um, yeah. And so what, what nice. We need to, yeah. Well, you got to you got to follow flow on LinkedIn, guys. Yeah. Right. Um, follow this link. And uh, maybe you want to talk a little bit about your, uh, if you sure. want to talk about your communication. Actually, we've yeah. got a tip for you guys. I forgot to mention right at the start. So, yeah. um, what uh, I mean, Flow is actually offering uh, something, which is if you want to step up your communication game, you want to, you can reach out to Flow for a free 30 minute exploration session with flow so you can book it here so we're going to put it in the comment section it, uh popcorn ai please help put it in the comment section and you can get in touch with flow okay now, yeah now yeah. Here's, here's something here's something that I'm, I'm really just offering for you and i'm not only saying that i really just do that for you because nina has been so enthusiastic and she told me all about your community and for me it's also always about helping out so you have the opportunity to do a 30 minute exploration session it's 30 minutes, so don't expect the world of it, yeah? But in 30 minutes, we can look at your superpowers. We can find a few areas of improvement. We can get a few ideas. And then mm -hmm. there's always another way to work with me if you want to. And of course, connect with me on LinkedIn. There's uh, some really cool stuff coming out in the next couple of months. We're working on yeah. the online course, which will be launched pretty soon, which is amazing. Speak, engage, present, right? That's that's literally the whole download. That's where you can learn anything from storytelling to content to your delivery to stage ride, whatever it is, virtual communication, everything included. So 
many cool things. So do follow me on LinkedIn and feel free to engage. And by the way, Tati, that video, that video. <laughs> okay, got it. Yeah, um, follow, yeah. um, I also <laughs> want to share that Jane is inviting you. His name is Flo, not Glow. Okay, <laughs> sorry, just saying, but you know, he glows too, uh, to a virtual tour of KL. Is that free of charge, Jane? Are you inviting him? And his yes, family? she said free. Please no, oh, that, no, that's me. No. Let, let, let me know and then I'll PM him. Okay, kind of thing. Yes. I've been in KL, but I never got a tour there. So yes, please. You have it? Yes, it's free. It's free. We'll give you a virtual tour. So it's like a holiday treat. It's like a staycation. Nice. Yeah? Yes. Okay, cool. Yes. I'll pick you guys up, um, definitely. And uh, Popcorn AI, so you see AI was right. Nina's superpower, she relationship builder and snake charmer. Whoa. I need a snake charmer video, I mean. <laughs> okay, last question. Last question. Uh, I mean, what's your biggest takeaway from today? Uh, uh the books i'm gonna take a look. i'm gonna check out some of the books uh okay. the yeah i think the superpower is something that i i really really like yeah uh, i yeah. i actually if you ask me i mean um speaking is my jam kind of thing but sitting with you i learned so much because i love i love 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 that you're saying that it's about uh number one of that we know that but superpowers you are so right the way we learn the way we prepare is different and you want to find what's suitable for you what works for you and also the other thing is though we all have different superpowers you don't want to take something that somebody else does you want to honor yourself so you you know and for the longest time i understand because you were you you were not embracing that hair and that heritage and and it's the same with me you know uh it kind of thing so yeah, um, I, I think that's so wonderful and definitely something that we can uh, take in from today. And also, it's not just that, it's also about structure, writing the content, like how you can say your words. It's also important to prepare because I mean, always, this is me for being over-prepared. I need to, because otherwise my mind goes everywhere because I've got a very short attention span, right? OCD. She's yeah. like really OCD. I'm kind of German in that way, even though I've never been there. So Angela, uh, who's also from, uh, who's also German, she's saying that she's the same as you because that's how she prepares. <laughs> you. Love it. Um, kind of thing. Um, oh, Popcorn AI says, I mean, superpower is eating content. That is true. He loves content. He's really good. Um, and and, and <clears throat> another thing is... Um, Another thing is the delivery and the voice because by, by practicing that voice and, and using it, you can, wow, you can actually bring people and transport them to a whole new place just, just by that. So, and, and you can bring out emotion, whether it's tears, laughter, joy, hangriness, or angerness, <laughs> depending on what you do. So thank you. Thank you. It's been super insightful. Thank you for reminding me of the power of communication. And yeah, thank you, Glow. Glow. <laughs> okay, we need, we need to finish off with one for the Instagram. Oh, yes, definitely. Can you share with us as well? Like a little story. And uh, let me take out these things. We're done here now. What I would love you guys to say, both of you, is go with the flow. Oh, definitely. Sure. Tag us, okay. tag us. You're ready. Fast, like, ready. One. Go with Two. the flow. Go okay, with the flow. Okay, one more thing, one more time, one more time, one more time. Sorry, we can yeah, do sorry, better. Yeah, sorry, I just, okay, <laughs> you can do better, let's do it. On your mark, get set, go. Go with, go the, with the flow. flow. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> well, thank okay. you so much, guys. It's been an right. absolute pleasure. Yeah. And, and thank and you for sharing with me and little Kayo. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, guys, I hope you really like that. Let us know what was the biggest learning for you. We want to hear from you. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Um, I'll get you connected with Jane uh, for that free virtual tour. Um, and yes, we will see you uh, when we see you next. Thank you so much. Bye, Flo. Okay. Bye, guys. Bye. Yeah, thanks. Okay, bye. You guys don't go anywhere because we have more announcements. I mean, can we really, really um, cover what's coming up next very quickly? Right. If, if you guys yeah. want to position yourself as business influencers, uh, we have just started a new Facebook group.
And that group is about sharing with you um, all the results that we've had with our students and how we're positioning them or how they have helped position themselves on LinkedIn to become to help build your impact, authority, and income. Okay. Um, now, coming up next week, we have got... Um, we're going to be talking about IP or intellectual property fundamentals for startups, what startups need mm -hmm. to know so that you guys don't screw up. If you guys are starting your own show, this is something that you guys need to list uh, or podcast. This is something you need to start um, having in mind. So that's why uh, we're having Gita come in. She's an ASEAN IP expert. All right. So same time, 8 p.m. next week. Next, uh, on Saturday, 6th of Feb, we've got the last killer all-star profile. Now, if you want to position yourself as a business influencer, so this is the best class to start. It's going to be our last class ever, ever, we're ever. We're going to have both of us in the class, guys. Um, yes, and you're having both Amin and me, so that's a treat. Um, and we're probably going to get Pauline in as well. So come on in on the fun. It's going to be the last one ever. Um, yep. And um, the week after that, we're going to be having Dean Wei. Now, if you're struggling to create your headline or to create your About Me page, um, on LinkedIn, you can actually write it like a sales funnel to attract people and get them coming to you. Uh, and so this is about this episode is about that where you get to create the evergreen content for every stage uh, of your funnel. Okay, sounds good. Um, and the week after, we're going to be talking about TikTok marketing, but I don't have the poster yet. But if not, follow us on all our social media and join the dark side. Or should I say the we fun are side? We Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube. Follow uh, guys, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Instagram. We are also in Telegram. We also are in Spotify as well, right? So uh, um, everywhere. Um, Popcorn AI is saying Pauline is away on sabbatical. Yeah, right. Okay, whatever. Anyway, we hope you enjoyed the show today. It is 9.40. Thank you so much for your time. Thank we you so hope much, guys. It's super beneficial for you. I'm Nina signing off. See you next week. And I'm Amin signing off. And again, guys, uh, we'll see you again next week. And if you're interested to come for the class, come for the class, join the group. And we'll yes, see you again. Another announcement. We're going live on the new Facebook group. And we're, we've got something really powerful to share with you. So we'll see you there. Thank you so much, guys. We'll see you soon. Bye. You've been popcorn. You've been popcorn. <laughs> Ciao. Yeah. Ba, 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 ba.